Today's episode is brought to you by Printable Heroes. Printable Heroes are minifigures for tabletop roleplaying that can be printed at home. Support the artists on Patreon to get the files. Or, if you don't have the time or the equipment, you can get laser-cut laminated pages from jpscreations.com that are ready for play. And you'll be helping to support the channel and research and development. Now for today's episode on Joint Array. Hello there ladies and gentlemen and how are you doing? I'm John and today I'm pretty excited about a fancy new uh, thing that I made. And first of all, I'm going to stop you because I know what a lot of you think. Ooh, John made another box. Let's dot the parade. Calm down. Uh, the box is mainly just a, a test of the jointery and a, a test to make sure it works. And it does. So I'm going to explain what that jointery is. Essentially, with this... It's a type of joinery that locks with the inside and outside so it cannot come apart and it makes them extremely strong, way better than finger joints or my uh, previous mortise and tenon style of locking because with these ones, they are even stronger since these tabs are uh, hooks that hook together and then the outside layer locks those hooks in place. So it makes it unbelievably strong. And there are two versions available in this handy dandy file that I made including them to show them off to everybody. And it's available completely for free. So you should go download it because A, it's something just kinda neat as a a uh, desk thing of a jig and you can also use it to roll especially on carpet or grass in case you need some uh, lawn dice uh, or the other version which has if you happen to cut these magenta lines it will instead of making a closed box like this one it will make an openable box like this one that has, let's just swap that, that has uh, space inside so you could use it to store dice like I did because <laughs> it's, it's a dice that stores dice so it's in two ways, a dice box. I, I think that's clever. Uh, and that is the usable form, but it's also the form that will allow you to actually test it and see just how strong it is. Because even though those clicks that you might have heard, I don't know, uh, it clicked. And that click was the sound of the glue that's over that area right there uh, failing and fracturing. However, with this specific design, the glue strength doesn't come from this tiny little section, that's where the mechanical strength comes from. The glue strength is in these pieces that are big flat pieces coming together. That's a lot of surface area on all nice, clean, rough wood that will make a great bond. Um, I have an example. Oh, it's under there. All right, so I won't show that off quite yet. The uh, this one can also be tested by yanking on it. However, it's full of dice, which would make that difficult. So I'll just uh, I'll leave it as as they say, the proof is in or the proof of the pudding is in eating it, and the proof of the boxing is in building it and breaking it. So that's why I'm making the file available for free so you can build one and you could test it till failure. Trust me, they take a lot and I'm not going to do it because it really hurts when you're pulling on something and it suddenly gives way 
because I've done it with them before and it it hurts a lot so you can have fun breaking them if you feel like breaking it otherwise it's a uh, a nice little dice box or uh, a dice cube that you could do with what you want otherwise it's a uh, yeah free file and I'll go into that file and start showing it off along with the parts which I will uh, show off these are the uh, cut ones a full cut version of this all of them and let's uh, let's get into that so the first parts to s talk about are uh, these ones here and they make up the sides on the inside box the most important part about them is that these are a they're symmetrical along this axis, so you can flip it there or there and then it's also symmetrical with itself this direction and after you flip one that way and you have one flipped the other way you can bring them together at a 90 slot them together and then down which then uh, holds them together so that they are stuck in that position the only way to take them out is to slide them out the same way you put them in and that's where the outside layers will come in because this will lock in those edges and with the one set they only lock the edge there however if on the other side ah here I should I should swap over to the camera that's here for this reason there we go so with this side the uh, the tabs have loops that loop onto them and they they hold it so it can't move in any direction and then once the second uh, outside piece is put into place both of oops, there we go both of those edges are locked and that's what all of the strength of these comes from you may notice with this one there's a little bit of play and that's because uh, I I don't have the kerf set up exactly on these so that it makes a perfect tightness however that doesn't matter as soon as the capstone pieces are put on because these have to go on uh, before any of the outside layers when these go on they slide into those and they leave their tabs up to create locks on with the outside layer as well but they also uh, pull the corner into squareness so that it can only live in one place and that is square which is for a woodworker amazing uh, and this is something that traditional tools you can't cut this intricate of stuff unless you spend an entire week just cutting things by hand and that's that's not doable machines make that doable so uh, I'll go over the entire way that this is built so you start with like I said these pieces that slot together and you just make your way around the whole piece until all of the pieces are put in like there and there and then we slot that forward and now that uh, outside frame is in place it's time for the capstone inside pieces Here 
is down in place all the way. As soon as that piece goes on, uh, any of that flex is gone from this inner box. There's only a wee little bit of flex on this end until this end's capstone is put into place. And now this whole box is very rigid. And this is the point where we can start adding glue. However, we don't glue this little box itself. Instead, the pieces that get glued are the outside slats. And, oh, there we go. There's the numbers on those. And these all have the numbers on them. And all of the glue is going to go on this big, empty, nice, flat surface. And if you know much about uh, glue, it works best with a larger surface area and with a roughness. And that's where the benefit of these being a rough wood comes in, especially because you could make this box or this box. And if you pre-finish the wood, like... Like this board, which has been... Painted blue that doesn't show up on the green screen. That's awesome. Here we go. Uh, so like this board has been painted blue, or actually it's been stained blue. That's why you can still see the wood grain. And then covered with a clear uh, polyacrylic clear coat. And then I put on a mask. That way in case, say, you engrave the numbers like this, you could then, if there's mask, paint fill that and then peel the mask up and have beautifully painted in numbers to go along with that blue so you can make them look really professional with this building style and still have them really strong uh but back to back to this i'm actually going to go ahead and glue it with some cyanoacrylate or super glue and I'm going to be using it because it's a lot faster drying now that I have that open I'll take this and normally if I was using woodworking glue I would smear the woodworking glue all over this surface and put it down on however in this case I am going to be putting the glue on this surface since this is a much more fluidy glue and it would dribble off of those big flat panels and let's see that is the top so I'll start with number six it would seem get number six put into place and I like to uh, whack them into place that little uh, bump force seems to get them to wiggle past into the slots. So we got six, I'll go ahead and add on one since it's the opposite side. And I haven't found that the order actually matters all that much. But I, uh, I also just recently figured out how to make this joinery so I may learn better in the future. Uh, and I work in pairs uh, from side to side is the thing that I do currently. I might find out something's better in the future, but by going side to side, uh, you can apply pressure and whatnot. If you were using wood glue, this is a place you'd have to get out the clamps and extra boards and actually clamp things. That's why I like super glue. Don't need clamps, you just need hands and fastness. There we go. Let's see, let's go with two. Actually, let's put that one as number five. Let's yep, that away. So there's number five. And for those who don't know, with a dice, Sorry, had to get that put into place. With a dice, the weighting on it, to be correct, 
the opposite sides should always add up to one more than the dice's number. So where this is a D6, all of the opposite sides should add up to seven. So to match the five, we need to have a two. And it's important to note the direction on these. Whereas that's the bottom, we want to line that up and then rotate it around because all of these have a U-shape pattern. And if you were to mess it up, like for instance, trying to put this on this way, it won't fit. It can only fit in the U pattern, which is why it's important not to uh, mess that up and glue the wrong one on. There we go. Those two are set. And now for the last two, lots of glue. Let's see, we got uh, one. Let's put a three here. Oh, that's not the one that has glue. Ah, come here, number four. Number four will go right here. There we go. And last, number three. Not by choice, just by random happenstance. Go that way. And... Yeah. There we go. Everything is nice and in place. Apply a little bit more pressure. And uh, if you were doing this with wood glue, you could at this point go around with a whole bunch of rubber bands and just rubber band the thing together. And you could use those as your clamp force. However, since I used cyanoacrylate, this is already nice and clamped and strong. And it is unbelievably strong. Uh, the process goes the exact same if you're building this guy, except the, uh, the top and the bottom are made separately, and I suggest making the, uh, the one that has the tab, which in this design was the big box. However, I changed that in the, uh, the design I released to be the little box. That way, uh, it isn't relying on the strength of this one sections glue to hold this piece on which is what it's doing currently whereas uh, to hold the lock on the big box this one has a lot more surface area so it makes more sense to be the outside holder that's all uh, mechanical engineering stuff that's not too important main thing if you're here just to get a free file you could you know just build that but if you're into the mechanical engineering, then let's take a look at the file and see how it all comes together. So, uh, this is the, the top and bottom pieces for the lid style one. And if you don't want the lid style, don't cut the maroon or uh, fuchsia uh, lines. Only cut the red lines and you'll make the solid box. If you cut the red and the fuchsia lines, you will make the lid box. So that's as much as the laser cutting stuff needs to go. For engraving it, uh, you could engrave it with a deep pocket like this for a nice dark effect. You could do a shallow and light pocket or you could do a vector engraving, which is much faster, but it doesn't have that same pop or readability. And to show that off, that's, uh, oop, there we go. So that's dark, light, and of course the vector. You can definitely see uh, that this is the easiest one to read at a glance. However, you'll get a lot more shadow effect from the engraving if you do something as deep as this. So that's where if you have mask, you don't have to worry about that. If you don't use mask, 
uh, it's probably better to do something shallow unless, like me, you just kind of like the look of it because it makes those numbers feel more three-dimensional. It gives them some weight, some, some pop. Uh, so I actually like that. However, this one took uh, about 40 minutes to engrave and cut. This one took about 30 minutes, and this one took like 15. So, as far as time, vector engraving would be the fastest. Uh, now back to the file itself. Uh, uh, these tabs to these right here are the links from the top to the bottom. You might notice that they don't have that hook design uh, because the hook design requires traveling in this axis, whereas these are designed to travel in this axis, and that's why it had to be a U and a T that went inside of the U. Uh, I guess, uh, eh. I can't make a T very well with my hands, but you can see the picture of it right there. Uh, that T to the U it flips up and goes on that way and uh, this is the capstone and that's why it's the capstone is because the other pieces can be in place and have to be in place before it goes on it's the last of the inside pieces and uh, it's the thing that specifically makes sure that the top and the bottom of the box can't be pushed out like so. Because in a uh, finger joint box, if you put too much junk in the box, the bottom will come out eventually, or if you whack it too hard, the as soon as the glue joint fails, the fingers just break free. Whereas this, the only way this piece can come free since this is now laminated to this they are essentially one piece of wood the only way they can come out is if these specific pieces here break along every side to allow that whole piece to come out or these fingers uh, there we go so you can see it these fingers that extend in here those would have to break one or the other has to fail and the wood has to break before it can come apart there's no way for just the glue to fail and for the box to fail because of that as a reference of what I'm meaning when I say finger joints for those who aren't woodworkers or laser crafters amongst us that's this type of joinery and I'll even demonstrate with this box the exact thing that's the risk is this Bloop. as soon as the force got too much all of oop, there we go all of the glue just came undone on that and none of the wood broke it's all still uh, in perfectly fine shape there's a little bit of splintering on the edges but for the most part that piece of wood didn't break and neither did these the the glue failed and as soon as that happened that flew out now this box I could try and try and try no matter what the only way that any of these pieces will come out is if the wood completely shears apart and I'll even show you an example of one that did do that right so here's one that did do that when I was testing them and you can see uh, like the tabs up here let me swap to the other camera real quick. Check on. Go. 
Aha! All right. So with this one, you can see what I mean. Those tabs completely broke away, and those are uh, they were just like these, where they had the loops, and the loops broke away. Because that's there we go. That's actually the the joint in question. And I'm going to uh, oh right. Uh, and this, as you can see, has that play. And I'm gonna break this one to show you, cause this one doesn't have the bottom. And as soon as those get added, it becomes insanely stronger. So with this one, it's actually weak enough I can break it. So let's, uh, let's show that on camera. I'll break it so you don't have to. All right. Put my screen back up, because I have a big mess down there. There we go. So that's it. After it broke apart, you can see uh, the various bits of wood here that have all broke away just to allow that to fail. Uh, and that's, that's that mechanical lock I was talking about. It takes a lot more mechanical force, or a lot more force, to break the wood than it does just to break a glue joint. And as you can see, like with this, we could put it back together. And if a person were to smear a whole bunch of glue in there, you could theoretically actually rebuild this. Uh, this one failed from. Uh, twisting this way however these ones failed from pure lift force you can't really tell about the same eh. so yeah uh, check it out like I said free file in case anybody's even still here free file check it out uh, if you're a laser crafter who actually knows how to build things and does sorry about that design things then you should check this out. Try to incorporate it into your own designs if you want them to be stronger and more engineerally sound. Structurally sound. Structurally engineered sound. Yeah! I'm just repeating myself at this point. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more random junk for me and have the chance to get free files. Uh, yeah. Bye.